On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to try to answer the question, what ABV of spirits makes the best vanilla extract? There are a lot of opinions online about how to make vanilla extract, and of particular contention is what ABV of spirits to use. Should you use 35%, 40%, 90%, 95%? Well, we wanted to test a common range of ABV spirits in order to really kind of figure out if there is any correlation between ABV and best flavor. And vanilla extract is a complex thing. A lot of times it's made with rum or bourbon or vodka and things in the alcohol, including the water chemistry of the alcohol, can lend to different flavor profiles in the vanilla, especially if you're using something like bourbon. A barrel aged bourbon is really gonna provide a lot of additional complexity on top of what you're extracting from the vanilla beans. And then add on top of that, that vanilla is a really multi-purpose thing in our kitchens and in our home brewing. So vanilla has to run the gamut. Cookies, cakes, pies, tea, coffee, fermented goods. There are lots of things we can add vanilla to. And we wanted to know what the best way of making vanilla is for the most holistic, most all-encompassing vanilla extract. And I decided I wanted to test it a couple different ways. And so I'm gonna show you here how we made our vanilla extracts, all seven of them, and the test that we did initially to try and determine which tastes best. So to begin our experiment, I lined up seven little mason jars. These are actually leftover little baby bottles from when our kid was still on bottles. And we kept them around and they actually work pretty well for storage too. We're gonna be using Everclear, which is 95% alcohol to make our tinctures. And I've got 10 vanilla beans that are gonna go into these across the full batch. So I'm using a special hydrometer here that is meant for measuring the alcohol percentage of distilled spirits. So I put that in my graduated cylinder and filled that up with Everclear. And then I'm gonna use distilled water. That's water with no salt or mineral content, just distilled water, completely flavorless to dilute the ABV down to 90%. Right at 90%, we'll pour some off and we're gonna use the exact same amount of spirits in each of these little bottles. It's about two ounces. And then we're just gonna repeat that process, diluting it further down. We're gonna do 80, 70, 60, 50, 45, and 40% 40 ABV. Then we're gonna get our vanilla beans out and I'm going to give them a nice fine chop, really dice them up. And then I'm measuring out the exact same amount in grams of chopped vanilla beans for each of these jars. So every jar will have the same liquid volume and the same solids volume. And I know some of them look a little higher than others. I filled these all up exactly to the same mark. So what you're likely seeing there is just slight variations in how the glass was formed. So all of these sit for 30 days to infuse. You can see there's definitely some variation jar to jar, depending on how much water content is in there with the higher ABV tinctures being a lot more clear, which definitely indicates some water soluble compounds that seem to transfer from the vanilla beans better in a higher water density tincture. It's interesting, and I wonder if it'll have any impact on flavor. We're using boiled water to keep our strainer clean and basically just straining out the solids jar by jar, trying to make sure we have no contamination from jar to jar. And there we go. Seven different vanilla extracts. And again, you can definitely see some interesting color variation. Not something I expected to see. Kind of interesting. You 
you can see that 50% ABV is the darkest one out of all of them. So for one part of this experiment, we're going to be making vanilla custard. And I'm gonna be making seven little tiny batches of custard using my sous vide. Each one of these is gonna be about three quarters of a cup in volume. And I'm gonna be adding a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract to each of these little bottles. And so we will have seven different custards with seven different ABVs of vanilla extract. So we can try them out and see which one produces the best flavored custard. So all of these got labeled and color coded just in case my marker came off. Those went in with my sous vide circulator for 75 minutes. And this is America's Test Kitchen's recipe for sous vide custard. You might check that out if this is something you're interested in doing. After 75 minutes, they come out and cool on the cooling rack for an hour, and then they will go into the fridge overnight for Anna and I to try the next day. Your first answer is, do you like it? And your second answer is, on a scale from zero to 100, where would you place the vanilla flavor? So fifth was B, sixth was F, mine was D, and seventh was G. was G. So we agreed on only on the worst. The other experiment we did with this was adding vanilla extract to a traditional mead made with wildflower honey. This is about a four month old mead and I added a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract to each of these cups. So seven different meads, all the same volume, each with a different ABV of vanilla extract added to them. And I invited my friend Garrett from the Man Made Mead channel to try these out with me. And we would rank them by our favorites to see if there are any standout vanilla extracts amongst the group. Our goal is going to be to rate how much we like them, like the vanilla, specifically the vanilla flavor. Okay. Out of a hundred, okay. so between zero and a hundred. So if it's absolutely putrid zero, if it's really nice, Great. it's 100. So it doesn't totally correlate to amount, increase amount, for at least for my, my scores. So 90, 70, and 80 were my top percents. No. Yeah. Mine were 90, 70, and 45. Hmm. So there was some correlation. Yeah at least there, that kind of leads me to wonder if different ABVs contribute different things depending mm. on what they're going into. Yeah. Uh-oh. Part two. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> all right, well, that's it. We can dump out all of these meats. <laughs> so let's plot the data on a chart like this, with one side being preference, the other side being ABV, and you can kind of read it like this, 40, 45, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90% 90 ABV. And those dots show what our preference was out of zero to 100. And while there doesn't look like too much of a trend there, on this particular chart, if we flatten in this curve a little bit, you can see a little bit of a trend line develop. So that's the data of Anna and I tasting it in a custard. And here is the data of man-made meat and I tasting it in traditional meats. And you can see now that there is some sort of correlation between flavor and ABV developing, but obviously these two very small tests weren't conclusive enough. So I invited my friend David over, who hasn't been on the channel in a while, so it was a great opportunity to bring him back for some content. And we tasted the vanilla straight out of the jars. We went ahead and anonymized and mixed them up, and we tasted them one by one. And we ranked them the same, zero out of 100. And so going back, here's that chart with the custard data and the mead data. And here is the data from David and I tasting them straight up. And now you can see that a trend did indeed develop. And the two main clusters of high scores are at 50% ABV and 60% ABV, but clearly 50% ABV made the vanilla extract that was liked the most across the most different avenues of consumption. It's 
So for our purposes, we see a moderate correlation between flavor preference and ABV at the 50% ABV mark. So based on these tests, my recommendation would be to buy a bottle of maybe bonded bourbon like Old Grandad that comes in 50% ABV and use that to make your vanilla extract to get the best flavor extraction while also providing some of those big, rich, dense, complex flavors from the bourbon. Now I know that this test isn't completely conclusive. I mean, we would need dozens if not hundreds of people to taste vanillas across a bunch of different goods in order to know that exactly. But I feel like this simple data shows that there's definitely a trend line that kind of clusters around that alcohol percentage. But I'm curious, I know a lot of you out there make vanilla extracts. Let me know in the comments what you would have done differently if you were gonna test this and let me know how you make your vanilla. What spirits do you use? What ABV do you focus on? What weight of vanilla to volume of spirits do you use? Drop a comment and let me know. If you like this video and wanna see more tests and more how to's, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified of our upcoming videos. And of course, hit the like button on this video. Until next time, happy brewing, happy extract making and cheers. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most.